program to bring you some breaking news out of Gaza. The Israeli military has targeted Beit Lahia, that's in the north of the Gaza Strip, killing, we understand, at least 60 Palestinians. Dozens of others have been injured and the death toll is expected to rise. These are some of the most recent pictures we're getting of the scene there in northern Gaza that has been under Israeli siege now for more than 15 days. We're talking about no food, no water, no medicine being able to get in. Also, residents there fleeing, coming under fire as they try to escape the fighting. The United Nations is warning Palestinians are being forced to endure, as they say, unspeakable horrors. The breaking news, as I mentioned, this hour, at least 60 people killed in an Israeli airstrike in Beit Lahia. Just to repeat, that is in northern Gaza, one of several areas in that part of the Gaza Strip that has been the subject of repeated Israeli military attacks and activity over the past uh, few weeks. Hani Mahmoud uh, is in Deir al-Bala in central Gaza. Hani, can you bring us up to speed with any more information that you have about what appears to be a truly devastating attack there in Beit Lahia? Yes, well, the reports that we're getting right now that more than 60 people have been killed in Beit Lahia project area, that's toward the western part of the northern uh, part of the Gaza Strip. This particular area, in earlier hours today, particularly in the evening, people were forced to evacuate to that area as the scale and the intensity and the, the, the massive uh, airstrikes and bombardment was taking place in the more central and eastern part of the northern city, particularly from Javari. So many people were forced into that area. And as soon as they gathered in one of the areas, many people ended up in relatives' homes and in in-laws' homes, part of their family members who are in that area. They actually got bombed and killed in the very area that they were seeking shelter. And we're talking about multiple family members, the Palestinian society in the northern part of the Strip is made of extended families. So many had relatives already evacuating from Jabali and other parts of the northern cities ended up now under rubble under the heavy bombardment and ongoing attacks. The confirmed reports that we had within the past 45 minutes, multiple air strikes took place targeting an entire residential uh, block in western uh, Beit Lahia city. Very packed with people, the local residents, and also those who evacuated earlier. The attack was so massive that they shook the entire western part of Beit Lahia. Many of the buildings collapsed while people were still inside in those buildings. They were not given the chance to leave, to evacuate the to safety. None of the warnings were given to people to evacuate as the, the bombing happened suddenly. And we are afraid, that according to the reports that we have been reading, that the number is going to increase within the coming hours as many of the people are trapped under rubbles, mm. ambulance, paramedics. And according to, I just made a quick phone call to one of our key members in the northern part of the strip who said paramedics, civil defense crew, and anybody who tries to help is unable to get to that area given the intensity of the artillery and the fact that there are many of the surveillance drones are hovering in the areas of preventing anyone from getting very close to that particular bomb site. Right. Uh, honey, we are looking at some of the first pictures uh, from the scene there in Beit Lahia. It's very difficult at the moment to get a, a full picture of the extent and the scale of the, the devastation there. We can see what looks like uh, flames. Um, this is a, a very telling repetition of other attacks that have been happening in, in recent days, not only in Beit Lahia, but as you mentioned, in Jabalia and Beit Hanun. These are areas that have been very much the focus of Israeli military uh, activity. The Israeli army are saying that they are still battling Hamas fighters on, on the ground, but every single time the result has been mass devastation when it comes to civilian casualties. Tell us what you know about bit lahia um actually before you do um hani we understand now the death toll has been confirmed at 73 so as you've suggested um the number of people impacted by this attack uh, is clearly going to rise a significant uh, uh attack in northern gaza tell us about bit lahia tell us about the makeup of these areas 
And given this ongoing military uh, activity by Israel, where people had been told to go, where people had been told to stay? This particular uh, attack on the, the western part of, of the northern city of Beit Lahia, this is the project area already densely populated with many people. It's from the initial weeks of, of this genocidal war and more recently, the, the past 15 days, people have been forced to flee into that area because they were not allowed to take any safe corridor to the southern part of the strip as the Israeli military claimed before. They were not given the opportunity to evacuate the area as full siege been imposed on the entire northern cities of the Gaza Strip. But it's toward the coastal uh, area, the, the coastal road of the northern uh, cities of, of the Gaza Strip. And the, this particular uh, attack, as I said, as, 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 um, me and, and our team member in northern Gaza were talking, but he described this as more of a reminder of the initial weeks of this genocidal war, the intensity, the the scale, the number of repeated attacks, and it's just a culmination of these 16 days of ongoing horror in the entire northern part. Let's not forget that people have been toward uh, 15 days of not having any proper access to food, water, supplies, or any life-saving uh, uh, resources or items have been forced uh, to, to flee from one area to another, literally being herded uh, from one area to another until they ended up in in the, the project area. This is an area in western part of Bethlehem City and being relentlessly bombed by those uh, airstrikes. The, the people not only have endured that, but right now they are paying the heavy price of this a ground incursion and aggressive invasion of the northern cities of, of the Gaza Strip. Earlier today, we heard many of the pleas and many of the phone calls that were made by the local residents, and they were, in fact, worried about coming to this point, and these, all the actions and the patterns of attack that were made by the Israeli military were ended up to this point. Many of the, the the calls and the appeals we heard from the local rhythm were, in fact, predicting that they were coming to this point because the patterns of attack were directed into more of like a final knockout punch for the residents who are, who are staying in northern part of the strip, who are trapped inside either Jabalia and the other parts of the northern city of the, of the Gaza City, more of like a, a collective punishment mm. for them staying in that part of, of Gaza Strip. And as we expected, the number is going to keep increasing because this is a densely populated area already. And with many of the people evacuating it from the center and the eastern part of Jabalia and the north, taking their uh, way, making their way to western part, the number increased dramatically just within the past few days as the attacks increased in, in, in the other parts of the, yeah. the part of the city. And also people were seeking to shelters and they wanted some food and water that they could only find in the western part of Beit uh, As you say, uh, Hani, I mean, it's less than 24 hours since the last major attack uh, where many dozens of people were killed, at least 20 women um, apparently killed in that attack that flooded the Al Auda Hospital, one of the last remaining hospitals still functioning in, in northern uh, Gaza. I understand there are at least another two, all of them operating on a shoestring at the moment, given that there has been no ability to get uh, fuel, uh, extra medical support into these hospitals. One can only imagine how they will now cope with the aftermath of this major incident in Bedlahia. If you've just joined us, we understand 73 people have been killed uh, in that uh, attack there. Give us an idea, Hani, of the kind of pressures uh, medical facilities are likely to face in the aftermath of an incident like this. Yes, well, it's, it's hard to imagine people are going to actually survive this kind of attacks right now. With earlier attacks, whether today or yesterday, or the past uh, few days as the Israeli military intensified its attacks across the northern city, over the host facilities were already overwhelmed by the large influx of casualties arriving, whether to allow the hospital or canal as one hospital. Now, these are the two host facilities. Allow the hospital. There is no hope that this hospital is, is surviving any of this pressure right now. It was really functioning as as 
as a morgue rather than a place of healing because it would right away transfer these cases to Kamala Glenn Hospital that is already overwhelmed and not in a good shape compared to other health facilities. Also, the entire medical care system or health care system is, is under pressure and not functioning as properly as one would hope in these situations given the intensity of the attacks. Kamala Glenn Hospital is also suffering from not only uh, the, the ongoing pressure but also so the insufficient medical staff uh, there, as well as the acute shortage of medical supplies. We know a couple of days ago the uh, World Health Organization uh, accuses Israel of denying some 50 uh, medical personnel from entering the northern part of the Strip, providing crucial uh, and essential support to the medical care there. Some of these uh, specialized personnel can, can perform specialized surgeries, but right now with 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 them being banned from entering the northern part of the strip, it's it quite difficult to imagine that any of the surviving individuals of these attacks are going to make it. And as we see now, the number automatically just going up right away from 16 to 17, now 73, and we expect it to keep increasing because those arriving to these overwhelmed hospitals do not have the immediate medical care that they need right away to be saved. Most of them are left on the floor of the emergency department of Kamala Dwan Hospital. They are lucky to make it up to the hospital. The way from from Western Bay Lahia to Kamala Dwan Hospital is shrouded with danger. The fact that there are drones, they're attacking drones, surveillance drones, as well as the, the, the Israeli army on the ground in that area is not leaving anyone. Uh, an opportunity to move safely yeah. from one area to another. We've, we've seen incidents in the past, paramedics and ambulance being shot at and di directly and deliberately attacked, prevented them from uh, reaching to bomb sites and, and rescuing people. So it's just hard to imagine that anyone, it would be a miracle if people, uh, people those who are uh, are casualties or are the suffer from this that are going to actually make it out of uh, Honey, give us an idea of what happens in the immediate aftermath of major attacks like this. Of course, you've mentioned ambulances struggling to get to the site of these attacks. Also, civil defence teams whose job it has been tirelessly to try and find survivors in burning buildings or pulling people alive from underneath rubble. But all of those lifelines... I guess, have been under a huge amount of strain given that this is an active area of is intense Israeli military operations. Fifteen days of near total siege. How are they even, even able to get to those who might be able to be saved from uh, the aftermath of an attack like this? Well, it's, it's, it's really amazing to see paramedics and civil defense who are still operating in these areas. We know they're, they're operating at the lowest capacity possible. There are no equipment, no proper machinery that if we talk about, if we concentrate on civil defense and their rescue missions that they take days and sometimes weeks to rescue people and remove bodies from under rubble. But in attacks like death, it just, it's just so, the pressure is so much and the act here out of, out of, Possibly, possibly an opportunity to save someone from from under rubble and hopefully will be transferred to a, a health facility that they can be safe. So the action here is more of like human instinct responding right away just to save as many lives as as they can, and this is part of what, what Palestinians are left with across the Gaza Strip, is just the, the uh, contrary to the, the, the narrative and the stereotypical image of Palestinians that they love death and destruction. No, in fact, people here, they love life, they want to live, they want to stay with their families, they want to continue with their life and, and see their ambitions and their dreams being achieved. And that's what we're seeing this right away response by the paramedics and the civil defense crew rushing to bomb site, despite all the danger shrouded in that area, but they rush to these areas and do their best to rescue. But with, with minimal capacity, with, with minimal uh, machinery and, and equipment and, and little things, uh, it, it, sometimes it's very difficult to see that any of this is actually uh, working. And many of the people die at these bomb sites because 
the, the lack of, of right. ability uh, to get there. Now, one doctor, particularly for medical missions, who always described us that many of the injuries arriving to hospitals can be treated, but because of the lack of pain medication and other medical necessities, they actually die in ICU or emergency department because medical staff, there's, there's so much that they can do, but without the proper medication, the injuries and patients are left okay. to die on the floor of the hospital. Uh, honey, you said something really uh, eye-opening a, a short while ago, saying that um, you were getting information from the north of the Gaza Strip, from in and around Beit Hanun, the Jabalia area, from people who say it reminded them that this attack reminded them of the early days of Israel's war on Gaza in terms of intensity, in terms of scale. I wonder if you can remind us of the significance of that, given that we now know that as many as 73 people have been killed uh, in this Israeli attack on Bet Lahia, the north of the Gaza Strip, the site of 15 days of near total siege there. Tell us about the significance of this reminding them of the early days of Israel's war on Gaza. Well, those 15 days of Angle war in the northern part of the Strip, mainly in, in Jab um, concentrated on Jabal, Kami, a reminder for so many people, particularly those who work in healthcare, medical staff. When we talked to them earlier today or even yesterday after the attack, the evacuation center, the common thread here is that this is very similar to the initial weeks of this genocidal war. The intensity, the devastation, the number of injuries, the type of injuries arriving to the hospital to the point where they were overwhelmed just within a few days of, of, the, of the genocidal uh, war. But it, the number, the large number arriving to these health care facilities, uh, like 20 plus in just a few minutes of mm. injuries right away coming at once, it's just a, a stark reminder of what they had endured at the, at the very beginning. The Israeli military in the initial weeks of this genocidal war carbon bombed the entire northern part of the Strip without warning whatsoever. Entire residential blocks were destroyed. Many of the buildings and infrastructures and public facilities were vulturized within days of the beginning of, of, of the attack on the northern part of the Strip. So many people, particularly medical staff, because they are the, well, the first the response line uh, dealing with the injuries, mm. it, it, it's more of like a horrible memory for them. And yes. now... What they're saying that this is, it's a reminder because the Israeli monitor at the beginning had promised that to, to empty the northern part of the Strip. And after a year, they're doing that in action right now, not just by air, but also by the forces on the ground. They are pushing civilians after trapping them, preventing them food, water, mm. and other survival items from reaching them. Now he's doing the action on the ground of emptying by killing everyone. That's what it seems to be because we look at the rate of, of how many people are dying on every single day, on daily basis. We look at 30 people in evacuation centers, another entire residential building with 20 plus people, and now we're seeing 60 people. And, and the other day, there were like more of 50 people in, inside Javalia. The rate of death and the number of people that are dying in very short time is nothing shorter than an ethnic cleansing of that area. Honey, um, I know you will, of course, keep a, a close eye and ear over anything that we hear coming out of uh, northern guards in the aftermath of this, um, what appears to be a, a colossal attack on Bet Lahia, one of the areas where the Israeli military has been focusing a huge amount of military activity over the past uh, couple of weeks. Hani Mahmoud, for now, uh, we will let you go. Of course, if you hear anything, do let us know. We will come back to you. If you've just joined us, a reminder of this breaking news that we are covering. A major attack uh, has been carried out by Israeli forces in northern Israel. At least 73 people we know have been killed. Our correspondent, Hani Mahmoud in Deir Bala, has described the area as densely populated. And the scale of this attack in terms of the number of dead and the number of casualties reminiscent of the early days of Israel's war on Gaza uh, that began, of course, a year ago. Hospitals in the north of the Gaza Strip have been working on uh, a shoestring with hardly any uh, facilities left. There are only a couple of hospitals or three hospitals, the al Auda, the Kamal Adwan and Indonesian hospitals that have been able to continue operating. But given 15 days of a siege there with no 
uh, significant supplies of water, food or medicine getting in there, you can only imagine the ability of these facilities to be able to deal with the aftermath of uh, an attack on this scale. The director of Kamal Adwan uh, Hospital um, has been speaking to us over the past couple of days. He, of course, was dealing with the aftermath of an attack in the Jabalia uh, refugee camp um, on uh, Friday in which 33 people were killed. He described the situation after that as being absolutely dire. So this, of course, adding a huge amount of pressure to hospitals already under strain.